Hi guys, Josh Lloyd here. NBA first looked for DraftKings for Thursday. We've got six games on. Let's crack in. But before we do that, hit the notification bell. Hit subscribe first if you haven't done that. Hit the notification bell. Give it a thumbs up. Drop a comment down below. First game, Utah Jazz, Washington Wizards. Mike Conley is resting in this game. It is a back-to-back, the first of a back-to-back for the Jazz, and it's the second of a back-to-back for the Wizards. I I don't expect Russell Westbrook to rest, but there is a possibility of that, but I I don't expect that. I think the guy that we have to look at targeting here is going to be Jingle and Joe Ingles, who will move into the starting lineup with Conley out. He's at 5,200, which is a really nice salary. Now, he hasn't been great, 27, 24, 18, 27, but we have a chance here of like a 35-pointer in 31 minutes. Yeah, at 5,200. Sign me all the way up for Joe Ingles. Love it. Beals at 9-1, which feels very, very cheap. And Westbrook's at 10-2, and I also like Westbrook at that salary. Again, there is a risk because those guys are on a back-to-back, but I still do like it. Uh, Rudy Gobert at 8,200, consistently underpriced on DraftKings. It's getting closer to where it needs to be, but I think this is a pretty good area for him. While Don Mitchell at 8-7, I think is a little bit too high. Alex Len put up a pretty big performance on Wednesday. I wouldn't want to trust him, but at 3,400 as at the likely starting center, you could do worse. You could probably do better, but you could do worse as well. So he's at least someone that we can consider there. Denny Avdia has been playing more minutes, while Rui Hachimura is playing better. 5,600 for Rui. I'm not fully ready to trust it, but 5,600 is not a big investment. So I do think that Hachimura can have some sort of an impact at that uh, at that salary level. The next game we take a look at, we've got the Utah, not the Utah Jazz, we've got the Oklahoma City Thunder. They are taking on the Atlanta Hawks in Atlanta. Um, for this one, Al Horford is likely to return. But we have no Darius Baisley, no George Hill, while Theo Maladon and Lou Dort are both questionable, which could really change the uh, the rotation there. Now, it's hard to fully understand how the Thunder will use Moses Brown, but at 4,300 in you know, 23 minutes, 24 minutes, he can easily get 30 points. Like That is the sort of player that he is, so I don't mind using him, but there is a big bust risk with um uh, with Horford back. Capella is questionable. He's missed the last couple. If he is out, then we fire up our Danilo Gallinari's at 6,100 and we get really invested in John Collins at 7,200. Both of those guys gain a ton of value if Capella happens to be sidelined. We know that Alexei Pokyshevsky is a roller coaster. He's going to start again, most likely, but yeah, 1548, 1533. They're the last four games as starters. You hope for the 48, you your worst case, you want 32, and then you could absolutely shit the bed and get 15. So that is the real risk with Pokyshevsky, but the opportunity is there, so he has to be in your pool of players. I think nine for Gildas Alexander is probably too high. Um, I do like 5,600 for Kevin Herter. He has been producing at that level, you know, averaging 28 over the last three, and I think this matchup's okay. I'm not interested in Dort or Maladon or Snell. Uh, I would be interested in Ty Jerome at 4,300 if we do hear that Maladon is sidelined because he would likely start there, and yeah, maybe he puts up 25 or 26. I think that is a distinct possibility. The next game, we've got a ton of questionable players to look at here. And by questionable, I don't, I'm not questioning their basketball talent, although there are a few of those in this game as well. I'm more talking about the injury status. Aaron Gordon, Evan Fournier, and Terrence Ross are all questionable for Orlando. Well, for the Knicks, Derek Rose is out. Emmanuel Quickly is questionable. And Alfred Payton is doubtful. So... Alec Burks at 4,900. There is a real chance that he could even be a starting point guard on this team just because um, of everyone else that's out. And if I, where is he, even is he on on the old DraftKings? Is he listed as a position where he shouldn't be listed as? Of course, he's a small forward, a position that he never plays. Um, He played 36 minutes last game and had 30 points. I think there's a great opportunity there. Rowan Barrett Jr. didn't play particularly well last game, didn't shoot well, but played 41 minutes and had 34 points. And at 6,400, He's in for me. Julius Randle all the way up at 10,000 because he's probably going to play 40 minutes. He's probably going to drop 50 points against this Magic team. So I do like that. While Nikola Vucevic at 10,100 is also in a pretty good spot, especially if Gordon and Fournier happen to be out. Quickly's at 63. I think that's too high. Carter Williams at 5'7 is also too high. Well, Aaron Gordon, if he returns, will definitely be on a minutes limit. And then Terry Ross at 6,700. Now, Ross has been playing yeah, quite well. Look at his last couple of games. They're 44, 42, 32. And at 67, you get 40 points. It's uh, where you want to be. But him being questionable, I think if he is in and Gordon and Fournier are out, I'd be pretty interested in using Terrence Ross in that scenario. But otherwise, if those guys do play, it is harder to get uh, too excited about him. 
Next up, we look at the New Orleans Pelicans. They are not New Orleans Pelicans. What am I talking about? That's the game after. We're talking about the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Phoenix Suns. Now, massive spread here. Ten and a half point favorites the Suns are, which is a little bit blowout risky. Um, I don't think it'll be that large of a margin, but you never know. That's how Vegas is profiling it at this point. Cam Johnson is out for Phoenix. Jordan McLaughlin and Jarrett Culver are going to be out once again for Minnesota. DeAndre Ayton has been disappointing. We know that this season. But it's 6,200. I chose the wrong game. That's why I was talking about New Orleans. 6,200 for DeAndre Ayton. Um, given that the last couple of games have been better. We still aren't getting big minutes, but 35 and 37 in under 30 minutes. I wouldn't expect over 30 minutes from DeAndre Ayton, but there is an opportunity for him here. I like Devin Booker quite a bit, blowout notwithstanding at 7,900. And then you go to guys like Chris Paul at 77, which might be a little bit too high, but I love Carl Anthony Towns. 9,400 for Towns. Anything under 10 for Towns, I'm going to get into. And same, well, not anything under 10 for Rick Rubio, but I like Rick Rubio at 5,800, who uh, dropped 48 in his last game. Anthony Edwards is at 7,100. He's getting every shot in the world. He is putting up relatively good numbers, 38, 46, 38, 40. Like, they're really good numbers at 7,100. No reason for me to expect that he can't do that again. While Jay Crowder at 4,600 with no Cam Johnson, I like it. There is some GPP upside there for Crowder without being an absolute rock-solid guy because we know that he can have the, uh, the occasional stinker. This next game has an absolute monster in terms of totals. 241.5 for the Pelicans in their rematch against the Blazers. The Blazers are one-point favorites after stealing the last game. Um, 5,400 for Carmelo Anthony. He's getting good minutes because they're just really eliminating Derek Jones. They don't, they don't care about defense, so Melo is getting big minutes. I don't mind that for Melo. Um, I love Lillard, though. 11,000 for Dame. He is uh, just killing people, really. He's averaging 59 in his last five. That looks awesome. Lonzo Ball at 6,900 is possibly a bit high. I think Cantor at 7,000 is too high. And I think Zion at 8,900 is on the high side. I don't mind it, but I'm not totally in. I'd be more in on Ingram at 8,100. Jackson Hayes at 32. Now, he's getting some okay games where he gets you 19 to 20 minutes and at basically minimum salary. Hazy can drop you know, 20 pointer, 25, 24 in those two games. Last game wasn't too good, but he can have a decent game. So I don't mind him as a guy that not many people will roster. Now, Gary Trent's at 53. I think his minutes will stay okay because of Derek Jones's suckitude. So Trent can be all right, but remember, his floor is really low. Well, Nikhil Alexander-Walker's at 4,200. I like what Nikhil's doing. He's getting a lot of minutes. There's no JJ Redick. Um, he's getting 20-plus minutes in the last or three of the last four games or the last three games that he actually played without getting injured. I don't mind using Alexander-Walker in that one. The next game probably has less appeal, and that's the Hornets. This is the last game. The Hornets and the Lakers. No Anthony Davis, no Marcus Gasol, no Alex Caruso, and it's a back-to-back for the Hornets. The Lakers are eight-point favorites here in this game, and the total is 227.5. But a guy that's been getting a ton of run and producing is Taylor Horton Tucker, and he's sub-4,000. His last couple of games, 31 and 41. Like, Will he continue that? Probably not. But with no Caruso, he becomes a second-unit ball handler. He's getting assists. He's getting steals. He's scoring well. He's shooting well. I, I like him at sub-4,000. I think there's value in that. Montrez Harrell also at 6,400. I think this is a really massive spot for Harrell. With no Gasol, he should play 30-plus minutes. Well, LeBron at 10 7, he'll get, he'll get it done. He, he's fine at that price. Kuzma, yeah, 6,000. Maybe, maybe not. Well, Gordy Hayward at 73 is one that I am interested in. Not as massive on uh, LaMelo Ball or even Terry Rogier, although Rogier playing pretty well at the moment. But 6,600, just it sort of takes a little bit of that upside away for me for Rogier. All right, let's have a look at you know, some good plays right across the board for the six days, or uh, well, the six games, sorry. I like Moses Brown and Taylor Horton Tucker, uh, Alec Burks. If Capella plays, I wouldn't mind using him against the Thunder. I like love Joe Ingles, Rowan Barrett, uh, Montrez Harold, Devin Booker, Carmelo Anthony, Brad Beal. Pokyshevsky is a GPP guy. Randall, LeBron. McCall Bridges, uh, Brandon Ingram, Damian Lillard, and Russell Westbrook also look pretty solid to me. Guys, that will do it for today's show. So don't forget, hit the notification bell, hit the subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and leave a comment down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. See ya.